What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. And today I have an exciting video where I'll be showing you how to connect to a database, in this case, the MongoDB cloud-based database with your Raspberry Pi Pico W, all within this video. So this is exciting because it's our first database video on this channel. So I'll be showing you how to do that really easily with the Raspberry Pi Pico W. And we'll be accessing the database through an API call, which is nice because it's a cloud-based uh, MongoDB database. And for those of you guys who don't know MongoDB, it's a very popular NoSQL database that we'll be using and it allows us to insert documents in, in a different form than you traditionally insert data into a regular database. So NoSQL, in this case MongoDB, uses a form of data called BSON, which is a, a binary JSON representation of data, which allows you to get more complex data structures to insert into your database. So there's many pros and cons of doing that sort of thing. And we're not gonna go into the exact details of why the pros and cons of why you want to use MongoDB. But a big pro of why we want to use MongoDB in this case is because we can access it through their data API. And all we need is an internet connection and it's free to get started. As long as you have your Raspberry Pi Pico W plugged into your computer with an active internet connection, you will be able to follow along with this video in MicroPython. So that's really exciting. So enough being said of the intro, let's jump straight into it. So you're just gonna to wanna to go to mongodb.com. As you can see, I'm already on there. And you just want to try free I already went through that and I, I clicked through and I selected the, the free trial, which is a good amount of data you have to work with and it suits many of your use cases. So don't be too worried about uh, getting into this and having to give them a bunch of money because that's definitely not going to happen. And I've been using MongoDB for a long time. I've never even paid. So it's, it's a great way to prototype and get started. So I'm just gonna sign in because I already created my accounts and I'm just gonna sign in through Google. And I'm just gonna show you guys how easy this is because it's really, really easy. So the first thing is we're on this MongoDB dashboard and the first thing you want to click is this data API. So I already clicked that before and there's probably some setup that I'm not going to go through, but it's pretty basic setup that you can just click through. And once you click through the data API and you approved that you want this data API to be set up, I don't think it comes enabled in MongoDB. You just have to enable it for free. What they're going to do is they're going to give you a URL endpoint, which you're going to copy. And I'll show you guys how to use that in the MicroPython code. And another thing you're gonna to wanna to generate is this API key. So I have my API key with this ID here that I already generated. And make sure to save it after you create the API key. If you haven't, you can always create another one. And make sure you keep that in a safe place because it is very sensitive information. So once you enable data API and you enable your API key, very simple. The next thing you want to do is create your database and your collection, they call it. So within databases, we have our collections. So in order to do that, you simply want to go up here to database and I already have a database and a collection, and I'm just going to browse the collections within that cluster, okay? So I'm just gonna go browse collections. And so the database we'll be working with today is called the Weather Data Database, and we'll be working with the collection BME280. And in the next video, I'll be showing you guys how to do things with sensors regarding this and other more advanced stuff in MongoDB. But for this video, we're just gonna insert some, some dummy sensor data that doesn't come from an actual sensor. So in this case, um, actually, just to show you guys from scratch, why don't we just go ahead and create a database? So let's just call it Weather Data 2, just for the sake of this video. I know I've been going fast here, but honestly, a lot of the things on this website, which what's nice about it is very intuitive, so you can pretty much click and get to where I am here in this database pretty intuitively, which is nice. And if you have any questions regarding that, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm just gonna create another database that mimics this just to show you how easy it is. We'll call it BME282. So it's really that easy and it's so quick. And we can see that we have weather data BME280. Okay, perfect. And we have weather data BME282. So this is an empty database and an empty collection which we're going to be working with. So if you're up to this point in this video, you should be set up in terms of the MongoDB side. Now there may be some issues you have with database access or network access, I believe. And if you're having issues with network access, look, it has my IP address, which I'll, which I'll hide um, before I show this video on the internet. But you can actually add other IP addresses if it's having issues connecting to your IP. And you can actually enable all IP addresses to just make that easier. Of course, if it's going to production, you want to limit the IP addresses because that can maybe be a security concern. But for testing purposes, you can actually add IP address and enable all IP addresses, okay? So, uh, exactly, so allow access from anywhere. So you can just do that and it's just 0.0.0. .0. So if you are having network issues with this MongoDB, you can just go do that and you will be fine. And I know we ran through that. So 
we have this micro Python code here with our Raspberry Pi Pico W. And so what we have is actually a very simple script here. So in this simple script, what's going on is we have a series of imports and one of the imports, let's just go through them, is first the UR request import, which is probably the most important import here because we need this to actually make a request to their API. And I think this comes with MicroPython with the Raspberry Pi Pico W. If it does not, what you want to do is you just want to go to tools, you want to go to manage packages. Honestly, I've been working with this Pico W for so long, I forgot which packages like come with it or not. And you could just search UR requests, I believe. So UR requests, and you can just do, you can just install that and that should be good to go. The other ones here are all just base libraries for MicroPython, I'm sure of. So you just want to do those network for uh, connecting to the internet and time for managing some time. I don't think I actually use these in this file yet. Actually, I do use time here, but I don't think I use machine anywhere. Let me check. That's probably in the next video, which I'm going to show you guys, where I actually use machine to connect to my BME280, but that's fine for now. And finally, someone asked me about this constants file in a previous video. So I just use this constants file. It's my own Python file that has sensitive information in it, such as my internet name, my internet password, and other passwords regarding my accounts. So you don't necessarily need a constants file. I just use it for YouTube so I don't show everyone my sensitive information. It's not good having that on the internet, even though it's not that dangerous because it's just an internet name and password. But generally, I just like to keep those hidden. So if you are confused by the constants file, just put your internet name and password here, hard code it if you're just doing testing. Um, otherwise, you can do more sophisticated uh, um, hiding of your sensitive information in your code if you want using some encryption, but that's beyond the scope of this video. So the first function we have here is we're just connecting to Wi-Fi. And this is a really standard way to connect to Wi-Fi with the Raspberry Pi Pico W. We're just passing in our Wi-Fi name, our Wi-Fi password, and this function is just gonna do the rest. And um, if you have been working with the Pico W, you've probably seen this function a million times over the internet. And so the meat of our code here is this try and accept part of our code. And by the way, I'll link this code in the description down below. So you guys, if, if it's too quick or you want to delve into it yourself without having to copy along here, It'll be in the description below. And so first in this try, we call the connect to Wi-Fi function. And in this video, we're just gonna be inserting one. So we're gonna use the path that they gave us on uh, MongoDB. So if we go back to MongoDB here, and you go to data API, uh, if we just copy this, and I, I paste it above here just to show you the difference. This is pretty much the endpoint that we're going to use. And we're gonna use, uh, an extension of the endpoint they gave us, and the action is just gonna be insert one. So you're just gonna copy that URL you have in the data API, and you're just gonna add forward slash action, forward slash insert one, to insert one document into our collection. So once you copy that in here, I just hard coded it in that case, because I'm just going to uh, probably just delete this API key after this video, it's fine. And then the document we're going to add today is going to be device my pico and we're going to have some random readings let's just say these are temperature readings that i just made up out of the blue and we're going to insert that into our collection and so the payload we have is first we want to call the data source so the data source cluster zero comes from if you go to database here you can see cluster zero so we got that and then what other information is it asking for here so the database weather data, so in our case, it's going to be weather data two, and then the collection is going to be, is it BME 282, okay? So that's how it's going to know which collection to insert the data into, and it's going to insert this document. So what's nice about documents is they're very versatile, and you can have, you can have very advanced documents with nested JSON or BSON, and so, in the future, if you have more advanced data structures that you want to insert, you can certainly do that. And what's even cooler about MongoDB is uh, you don't have certain restrictions on the type of uh, JSON you have in, in that specific collection. So I can have a, a JSON that only has readings but doesn't have the device, and I can have one that has device and doesn't have readings. So there's no strict rules in terms of the format of the data for that database, unless you define it somehow, which I, I never have, but it's, it's really easy just to insert documents into your collection in MongoDB if you haven't used it before. And you'll find out over time it's a really convenient and simple way to insert data into your database. 
So once we have that ready to go, we're just gonna print sending just to show the, the person coding that something's happening. And then we're just gonna post with the request library. So don't be fooled here, request is just UR requests in disguise, so I just called it requests. And we're just gonna post with the headers and the JSON, which is the payload, with that URL. And if you did everything right, it should just say added successfully. So let me just go ahead and save this and run this code and hopefully nothing breaks. I feel like every time I make a YouTube video, something bad always happens, even though I test it before the YouTube video. So let me just go ahead and run this. Yeah, and make sure you have the correct API key there. I know it's long and you can probably miscopy it sometimes. Okay, so it looks like it added it successfully. So let's go check the MongoDB database. So let's go back there and let's go here. Loading documents, okay, awesome. So it has the device as we added and it has all of the points, so that is perfect. So this is just the introduction of how you can use MongoDB database to easily get started with a database with your Raspberry Pi Pico W. As you can see, very simple, if you went through this whole video, we use a cloud-based database for free to insert documents or data into our database. And we're eventually going to extend this to actual use cases where we use a sensor to send data to this database. So the next video, we'll go through that. We'll be using more advanced uh, calls other than insert one to actually access data in the database and maybe insert more than one. So I'm going to go and play with that in the next video in part two. So stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions, if I went through anything too quick, I know I introduced a, a whole new concept in this video that I have it in this, in this YouTube channel, which is the MongoDB NoSQL database. So let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to see what you guys think, see what questions you guys have. And always guys, don't forget to subscribe for more content regarding the Raspberry Pi Pico W and other microcontrollers and sensors on this channel. We also have full stack and Python related content for you guys as well if you're interested in that. So stay tuned, thanks for watching and take it easy everyone.